I'm Kim. Welcome to my kitchen. I cook using a plant-based diet and I have a lot of tricks and ideas that, I, that my family really enjoys and I wanted to share with you some of these ideas. One of the first recipes that I think is really a, a core to a lot of things we eat is a vegan cheese. Uh, we all miss cheese and I, you know you really try to search for something that's really close to the real thing with lots of flavor and it's rich. So I want to share with you my recipe for vegan cheese. First thing you need is a really good food processor with lots of power. I've been through a lot of them. Uh, you just have to try different ones that work for you. And I tend to get one every couple of years because the blade dulls. But you have to have one of these in your kitchen. I have two different sizes. I have a small and a large. We're going to use the large um, food processor today. And we're going to start by using raw cashews. You can get raw cashews at the grocery store. You can get the broken kind pieces or you can get the whole. The pieces are a little bit less expensive, but make sure they're raw and not roasted. If you get them roasted, they'll have a lot of salt in them and probably a little more oil than you want and nuts naturally have oil in them. Put these in your food processor. I used about a half a cup of nuts. If you want to cut back on fat, you could use a quarter of a cup, that's okay. But start with about a half a cup of nuts and then you can gauge whether or not you want to add more or, or less. Put the top on your food processor and start grinding. And you want to grind them until they're a powder, a very fine powder. So just relax and just let it go. I process for about three or four minutes and it almost looks a little bit like a powder. Um, it, it, it's moist because you do have moisture in your nuts so it might seem a little bit moist to you. The next ingredient is four tablespoons. I've already pre-measured it out. It's four tablespoons of brewer's yeast which is very good for you. It's very rich in B vitamins. You can get it at a natural food store and make sure you get the flakes, the brewer's yeast flakes and put that in there and then I pre-boiled carrots and potatoes about two potatoes and about six or seven of the pre-done very small um, potato uh, carrots and put that in there. These are already cooked and then you want to add a couple of tablespoons of tahini. Tahini is Organic. Well, this is organic tahini. It is sesame seed paste. It's it's kind of like a peanut butter, but it's made from sesame seeds. It's it's oily like peanut butter, and you want to put a couple of tablespoons in it. It has a very sharp flavor to it. I think it's what gives it its cheesy taste. Put your tahini in there, and then Dijon mustard. You might want to add about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. You could add a little more if you, if you happen to like Dijon mustard. You just need to experiment a little bit with this recipe, but I would start with a tablespoon because that's what, the recipe, what my recipe calls for. And about a cup and a half of water. And then flavorings. This is a really important part. You might want to add a um, smoky flavoring to your cheese, which is, I have a mesquite flavoring, a kind of a grilled flavor. The other is roasted garlic and herb. And I'm going to use my cheese when I make lasagna later on. So I'm going to use an Italian roasted garlic and herb flavor. And it's a little bit salty, so you don't want to add too much. I would say a tablespoon. Um, or two. And you can go to your local grocery store and they have all sorts of flavorings that you could add if you, if you like a smoky flavoring in your cheese. And then put your top on and you're going to start processing again. And you want to process for a while. You want to get it really smooth and thick. So I'll start that. Alright, I have let my, my cheese process for about three minutes, somewhere three to four minutes. It depends on your processor. Take it off and you have a beautiful creamy cheese sauce mix. I'll put it in here and show it to you. It's very, very thick. 
You can make it thicker by adding more potatoes or more nuts, or you can make it thinner, whatever works for you. Then what I do is put it in a container and keep it in, in your refrigerator. You can use it for all sorts of things. You can use it for fettuccine alfredo, you can use it for macaroni and cheese. My kids love macaroni and cheese. Instead of using carrots, you could use a little bit of butternut squash instead of carrots. Use what you have in your refrigerator. If it's carrots that you have, use it. If it's butternut squash that you have, use it. I even used a sweet potato last week because I got really desperate. Um, but, but at any rate, you, you've got this nice cheese and you can use it for lots of things. You can drizzle it over your vegetables at night um, for a side dish. My kids like to pour it on top of just about everything. You can make it thicker so it doesn't have to be this thin. If you cook it, it will get a little thicker. This has a very garlicky, herby taste and you can make it smoky depending on the flavor you want. Put your top on it and put it in the refrigerator and enjoy. You don't have to go without cheese.